In the previous part, we have talked about the k-means algorithms to cluster data points in the main memory. But what if the data set is so large that it can't fit in the main memory? So next, we'll talk about the BFR algorithm, which is an extension of k-means to large data sets. And since the BFR algorithm is designed to handle very large data sets that are stored on the disk, it usually needs only one pass through the disk. And this is because the disk IOs are relatively expensive. And one important point is that the VFR algorithm actually assumes that the clusters are normally distributed around a central in the Euclidean space. And it also assumes that the, basically the standard deviations in different dimensions may vary. So basically the clusters are axis aligned ellipses. For example, let's look at these three clusters. We can see that these three are all normally distributed. And the blue cluster, actually it has standard deviations. Um, its standard deviations are the same for different axes. But for the green cluster, its standard deviation in the Y axis is actually larger than the standard deviation in the X axis. And for the red cluster, it's actually the opposite. So basically what BFR algorithm does is that it finds a efficient way to summarize the clusters so that the memory requirement is no longer linear to the number of data points, but it will be linear to the number of clusters only. This way, the algorithm will be much more scalable. And in the BFR algorithm, points are first read from the disk, one memory full at a time. And the most points from the previous memory loads will be summarized by simple statistics. For example, let's look at this figure. Let's say that on the disk, we have a very large data set and we split them into trunk. And this is the main memory. The main memory will read one trunk of the data into the memory and then it will calculate some statistics, some cluster metadata. And then it will discard this first chunk of data and read the second chunk of the data and do similar stuff. So basically to begin from the initial load, we will select the initial K centroid by some sensible approach. This is like the initialization of the K-means approach. But we have several options. For example, we can just randomly pick K points. Or we can just pick one random point. And then for the, for the K minus one more points, we will select each point so that one point is as far away from the previous point as possible. Basically in this second option, we want to keep the K points as spread out as possible. And the third option would be just take a small, really small sample and just cluster them optimally, and you can choose whatever algorithm you want to choose. You can use k-means to cluster the algorithm, or you can choose hierarchical clustering. And now that we have the initial case entry and statistics, we will maintain three sets of points in the process. So basically we'll maintain the discard set. And these are the points that are close enough to a centroid to be summarized. So the, these points will be summarized and absorbed into some centroid of the cluster. And, and then they are discarded. So this is why they come, this is why they call discard set. The second set will be the compression set. And these are the, just the group of points that are close enough, but not close to any existing centroid. So these are like mini clusters. We, we pre-process. And these points are also summarized, but they are not assigned to any cluster yet. The third set would be the return set. And these are just some isolated points are waiting to be assigned to a compression set. More concretely, let's look at this example. Remember we have three sets, BS, CS, and RS. Like these, these are the BS. If one point is actually very close to the centroid, then this point will be in the VS and it will basically be absorbed into this cluster and, and discard it. And these are the mini cluster, basically these points, all points 
that are close to the center of these mini class, these mini clusters will be put in the CS. And of course, there will be isolated points, which are then are put in the RS return set. So how do we summarize the points? For each cluster, the discard set is summarized by three parts of statistics. The first part would be the number of points, which is n. And the second part would be the vector sum. These are just like summing up, summing up all the data points. For example, like for example, if we have each point of dimension d, then the vector sum will be also of dimension d. So basically the ith component of the sum of the coordinates of the points in the ith dimension. And the third part of the statistic would be the sum of squares or sum sq. And it can be computed as, for example, its ith component equals to the sum of squares of coordinates in the ith dimensions. And this vector will later be used to compute the variance of the cluster. You may have noticed that we only need 2d plus 1 values to represent a cluster of any size, no matter how large, how many data points we have in a cluster, we only need 2d plus 1. And d is the number of dimensions to represent each point. And the average in each dimension or the centroid can be calculated as the sum sub i, which is the ith dimension of sum divided by n. This is very simple. It's just taking the average. And, and the variance of a cluster's discard set, it's simply computed as this one using this equation. Note that this is from just from elementary statistics saying that the, the variance of x is simply equal to the expectation of x squared minus the square of the expectation of x. And of course, the standard deviation will be just the square root of this variance. Now that we have all the summarization, the next step will be how to do the actual clustering. Basically, we will have five steps. In the first step, to process the one memory load of the points, we'll first find those points that are sufficiently close to a cluster centroid and we'll add those points to that cluster and the DS. So basically these points are so close to the centroids that they can be summarized and then discarded. And the second step would be just to adjust the statistics of the clusters to account for those new points. And this is like the, the recalculating the means in the k-means algorithm. So basically we'll just add the ends, add the sums and add the sum sqs. For, for the points. And then in the third step, we'll use any man memory clustering algorithm to cluster the remaining points and the ORS. So basically we will cluster the any points in the CS and any points in the in the RS. And after step three, basically the, we will have new mini clusters, which will be going to CS and we'll also have some outlying points. These are the isolated points, which will be going to the RS. And then in the fourth step, we can consider merging the compressed sets in the CS. And usually we can repeat step one to step four for multiple rounds. And if this is the last round, then we have step five, which is to merge all the compressed sets in the CS and all RS points into their nearest cluster. So basically in the last round, we have no choice but to just merge all the points in the CS and RS into DS.